What's good? It's your boy Twiz. Have a seat and join me as I clap back as a hater that responded to my last video. So I watched a little bit of Steven Universe not too long ago, right? So when Steven combines uh, with that girl, when you know when they become one, is that the same as them having sex, or how does that work? <laughs> uh, it's their souls becoming one. Yeah, so they're they're having sex. Yeah, and they're doing that on a kids' cartoon. That's just disgusting. This video feels like reaching for straws. You make GeForce now bad because you have to buy games on Steam. Allow me to clear up that misconception. I don't think GeForce Now is a bad product. I like GeForce Now. In fact, I'm a founder and that means I'm paying the $4.99 a month for it. Where my opinion differs is I see GeForce Now as a supplement to Stadia, not a replacement for it. It's nice that I can play many of my old games in the cloud through GeForce Now, and because of that, I think it's worth the $4.99 fee. But let's assume I was not already a GeForce Now founder and I was to buy a brand new game. Most games on Steam and Stadia are the same price. But if I want to play it in the cloud on Steam, I also have to pay the additional fee for GeForce Now. Whereas on Stadia, I can just buy the game for the flat fee. On top of which, as much as I like GeForce Now, GeForce Now is inferior to Stadia. Stadia has way more data centers and Stadia has way more cloud only features coming. GeForce Now does not have this. Where they are far cheaper than 59.99 Stadia versions of two year old games. For the most part, the games on Stadia and the games on Steam are the exact same price. There are exceptions. There are some games that cost a little bit more on Stadia than they do on Steam, but at the same time, there's some games that cost less on Stadia than they do on Steam. Yes, Steam gets sales sometimes, and sometimes you can get a really good deal on Steam, but they refuse to admit the same thing also happens on Stadia. Stadia gets sales as well. And truth is, if you shop around, you can usually get games cheaper somewhere else than you can even on Steam. Most of the backlash about Stadia prices being higher came from Darksiders Genesis. For whatever reason when they released that game instead of releasing it for the same price on stadia as they released it on steam they released it as the same price they were releasing it for on the consoles which was very strange and i'm not gonna lie to you i was a little bit upset about that myself but that begs the question why do y'all attack stadia for having console prices why not attack the consoles as well notice it's a problem you only apply to stadia as in some type of bias in fact i also shown in one of my previous videos that nintendo switch games are often 10 percent more than everywhere else but notice nobody gives nintendo shit over that you know what screw it let's go ahead and show you prices look at this red dead redemption how much you see 59.99 how much is it on stadia 59.99 assassin's creed odyssey on steam how much is it 59.99 how much is it on stadia 59.99 all right cool doom eternal how much is it on steam 59.99 all right how much is it on stadia 59.99 do you see a pattern yet borderlands 3 how much is it on steam 59.99 how much is it on stadia wait $41 on Stadia? What's going on? Are you telling me Stadia has a sale and it's cheaper on Stadia than it is on Steam? Oh golly! But guess what? The fun doesn't stop there. It turns out there's even more savings to be had if you're a Stadia Pro subscriber. That's right. On top of the normal discounts they have on Stadia, you also get additional Pro discounts. Here, let me show you what the discounts are for this week. Look at this! Assassin's Creed for 20 bucks. That's $40 off. Borderlands for 30. That's half price. And look, what's this? Red Dead Redemption 2 Ultimate Edition. It's the same price as the normal edition. Hey, what is Red Dead Redemption Ultimate Edition? What what is that on Steam? We didn't even look. Let's have a look. Holy shit, it's a hundred bucks. Wow, you get the game for $40 off. So let me get this straight. I have the option to pay $10 a month for Stadia Pro, which already gives me good features such as streaming in 4K. But on top of that, if I buy a game, I can save more money than the cost of Stadia Pro itself. That is crazy, man. But check this out. I'm not done yet. Stadia also was so nice. They graced us with an additional $10 off our next door purchase. So you know what I bought? I went ahead and I bought Borderlands. It was already $30 with all those discounts. Then I got an additional $10 off. Here, check this out. I bought Borderlands for 20 fucking bucks. Man, seeing all these low prices, I'm starting to forget what the original price was. What was it on Steam again? Oh yeah, that's right, 60 bucks. I'm gonna tell you what, man, y'all gotta drop this whole narrative of Stadia being expensive and overpriced, costing way more than other stores. If anything, Stadia matches the standard price. Sometimes they have sales, sometimes they don't, but Stadia matches the standard price, man. Y'all gotta let this shit go. If you already own 50 games on Steam, that is 50 more games than Stadia. I'm gonna be real with you. I don't really understand what you're getting at. Um. I have a bunch of games for all my platforms, including my Atari, my Sega Genesis, my Super Nintendo. I, I just, I, I don't, I actually don't know what you're getting at here. I'm just gonna move on. Stadia is inferior. That's why people don't want to buy games twice. Oh, people aren't buying games twice on Stadia because Stadia is inferior. That makes so much sense. You know, I always thought people weren't buying games twice because buying games twice was stupid. 
Are you crazy? Or just plain stupid? Stupid as stupid does, Mrs. Blue. No, on a serious note, I have a PC, a Nintendo Switch, and a PlayStation. So, you mean it's normal for people to buy the same game for all systems they own? So if I buy a game for my PlayStation, I need to buy it for my Switch and my PC as well? No, I don't think you need to be doing that. If you're doing that, cut that out. You're wasting your money. If there's a game on sale on Stadia that you already own, don't buy it because you already own it. How about you only buy games on Stadia if you don't own them somewhere else? This is a non-brainer thing and a lot of people make this argument and it makes me wonder how many of y'all are actually out there eating paint chips did you eat a lot of paint chips when you were a kid <laughs> why g-force lets people buy the game once and own it forever all the stadia games are gone when stadia dies correction all the games that you say you're buying on g-force you're actually buying on Steam. And those games are only there as long as Steam is alive and well. Same as Stadia. So if Steam was to go under for any reason, all your games leave, just like if Stadia was to go under for any reason. If Sony collapsed tomorrow, all my games would still work. Okay, but I have all your games forever. I assume you're talking about disc. Okay, before I respond to that, I wanna pause and point something out. This is something that people do a lot. It's a very disingenuous argument. For starters, he started off talking about Steam and tried to use Steam as a way to attack Stadia. But then, when that didn't work, he uses the console as a way to attack Stadia, saying that, well, at least on the console, he has his disc so he can always play them. But then that flaw of Stadia not having disc and not always being available also applies to Steam. They constantly pivot where they're coming from in a way that Stadia can never win. The only way Stadia could ever ever come on top in this type of argument is literally if Stadia was better than every system in every way imaginable, therefore they can never find a weakness of Stadia to compare it to. Anybody who's trying to have a debate with these talking points or an argument with these talking points, they're not trying to have a genuine discussion. They're simply trying to win the argument regardless of if they're actually right or not. But back to what you were originally saying, at least you'll always have your disc so you could always play Sony games even if Sony goes under. Well, that might be true now, but that's not gonna be true for too long. I mean, look at this. Sony announces PlayStation 5 Digital Edition with no disc drive. As you can clearly see, Sony's trying to get away from it, and so is Microsoft. They both have discless consoles coming up. I know some people are still going to buy the one with a disc in it. Don't be too surprised if after release, Sony discontinues the disc drive, because I have a feeling they want to push everybody towards digital. Real funny story, man. In the last 15 years, I probably only handled three game discs. Real talk, I've been doing everything digitally downloaded on my PC and my consoles for years. Actually handling disc, opening the case, putting a disc in, taking a disc out, putting it back in the case, it just feels barbaric to me. But this exact argument saying, well, at least I got my games, I can play them whenever I want. You don't know if your digital stuff's always gonna be there. People made that same argument to me years ago when I first decided to go mainly PC. All my console friends were like, oh no, I don't trust downloads. I like always having my games with me what if you're not able to download it or what if steam goes under it's like we heard these arguments again and now it's coming full circle everything we heard about downloads is now being applied to streams truth is man i'm not worried about it oh dude that looks good you can see the reflection in the fucking sand look at this look at that shit y'all see that shit dude the subscription argument this is easily the stupidest moment of the video 1400 the point of the subscription is that currently you don't own any games on Stadia. You just have access to them. So for 9.99 a month you should be able to use and play all the games. Instead Stadia makes you buy the privilege to use their games. This video is getting long enough so I'm not going to bother to play the clip he's talking about especially because he didn't seem to understand what I was saying anyway. I'll put a link in the description for anybody who does want to see it. But what he's getting at, I think he's saying that if you're paying a subscription for a pro, instead of having access to some of the games on Stadia, you should have access to all the games on Stadia. That's what it sounds like, right? Okay, so for starters, you need to understand Stadia is not trying to be the Netflix of games. Stadia is not trying to be like Xbox Game Pass. Stadia is actually a lot like, uh, what is it, PlayStation Live or whatever the PlayStation monthly thing is. You know, I refuse to pay for it because I'm not going to pay a monthly fee on a console just to have access to online. That is such a ripoff. But we're Regardless, let's call it PlayStation Live. So that's like saying because you pay for PlayStation Live and because they give you a couple free games every month that you should have access to every game on the PlayStation Store. You didn't really think this out too well before you wrote this comment, did you? Popular games like FORT and ITE, Apex Legends, Warzone are nowhere to be seen. Well, Stadia is a developing platform, so it's understandable that all developers are not on board right away. 
as the player base grows, more developers will come and more games will come. At least it makes sense that Stadia doesn't have all the games. Like I said, it's new. Since unlike a traditional console, Stadia requires no hardware investment, meaning I didn't pay any money to play on the platform, that means I could theoretically have money to buy another system to play those other games. So it's really a non-issue. Only people who would want all online and no local hardware are old dads and shit. I actually think you have this one backwards. I think the people that are going to want local hardware are going to be the people that grew up with it and they're going to be older and set in their ways. There will be some older people that will see the convenience of streaming and they will gravitate towards it. But for the most part, the people stuck with it are going to be the people that grew up with it. The younger generation, or perhaps even the people that aren't born yet, when they get older, they'll be like, Grandpa, why are you always downloading and installing games? That takes too long. Why don't you just stream the game like everybody else? Stream is the future and almost everybody will tell you so. If the internet goes out, I can still still play any of my games that aren't online focused, no lag, no input delay. The truth of the matter is, man, I play games so much that I probably need a break. So if the internet was to go out, maybe I need to get up from my computer and go do something else. But I will go ahead and give this one to you. It is an inconvenience. If my internet goes out and I want a game, I will not be able to. But I still don't think that overrides convenience and benefits I get for playing in the stream. It's a trade that I'm willing to take. But you said something about playing games locally with no lag and no input delay. I find that very funny. It turns out there's some games that actually have more input delay locally than they do on Stadia. And the fact of the matter is, as as we stream from more powerful computers in the cloud, that input delay is going to be cut down even more. But it is 50 milliseconds faster than the local Xbox One X version, which is running at 30 FPS. It's all one to one. Stadia doesn't even reach the promised 4K. When you say Stadia doesn't reach the promised 4K, I assume you mean that every game on Stadia doesn't reach 4K. Okay, I can understand why you would think that. They never actually said that every game would be 4K. They said Stadia can stream up to 4K. When Stadia launches, we will have increased performance significantly to support resolutions up to 4K at 60 frames per second. So I already did two notifications on- oh! Wait for ESO same day. I'll be on ESO day one, man. Make sure you look for me. But um, the fuck just happened? So I know you're aware that many games on consoles such as the Xbox One X do go up to 4K. But see, the reason Stadia doesn't go 4K, at least it seems as so, because instead of going for 4K 30 FPS, the developers of the games wanted to shoot for 1080 60. And most game developers, most players will tell you, games feel and play better when they run at a higher frame rate, not a higher resolution. So if you have to choose one, I think it was smarter for the games to go with 60 FPS. But something funny I want to add on to that, although a lot of games did not start off with 4K support, seems like almost every day a game on Stadia is being upgraded to 4K 60 FPS. Remember, the Xbox One X is still struggling to get games above 30 FPS. The download argument is pretty useless if you don't even have the games to play. What? Just buy your game and play it like you do everywhere else. I am so confused. Cool that Cyberpunk is instant access two months later. Well, the game was in development for almost five years before they even got the ability to develop for Stadia. So the fact that they're going out of their way to port the game on Stadia says a whole lot about how much they believe in it. Also, auto downloads take care of this problem anyway. Come back to the system and it's updated for you. Well, that's assuming you didn't run out of hard drive space and forget to uninstall games in order to make room for new games. It seems like a minor hassle, but it's one less minor hassle you have to worry about if you go on Stadia. The reason Yong says nothing good about Stadia is because he doesn't have anything to say. An ace is an ace and a spade is a spade. No, the reason he doesn't say anything good about Stadia is because he's extremely biased against it. It also seems like he's going for hate clicks. Either way, did you show up to my video and comment just to defend Young? Man, get off that dude's dick. I swear, man, if you were on that dude's dick any harder, you'd be his nutsack. Anyhow, I'm your boy Twiz. Don't forget to like, comment, follow, and subscribe. And as always, as always, thank you so much for supporting my channel. Laters, y'all. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 no. Oh, God, no. Oh, God. Fuck. No, 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 no. Fuck, what the fuck is going on? Run, motherfucker. Run, motherfucker. Run. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. I'm alive.